Welcome to Vector Lab. Today, we're going to talk about Agent Bricks, but we're going to focus on one of the tiles that we have, and it's called Custom LLM. Agent Bricks is the Databricks functionality to do kind of low code creation of some agents or agentic functionality. And today, we're going to talk about this Custom LLM here. Uh, we have this use PDF option, which is uh, you point it to a source of PDFs in a volume, and then it's going to do the parsing for you. We have another video on this, so we will link it in the description. But then we're going to focus around this one. So what does it do? So this style specifically is about tuning an LLM into a specific task. This task usually can be a summarization of text, can be classification of text, sentiment analysis, things that before we had to train bespoke models to do these isolated tasks. Now we're just tuning a pre-trained LLM to do this. We're also going to show you that there is a functionality to even optimize when you are ready and you want to serve this agent now, how you can optimize for cost before you serve this first so that we are all on the same page. Let me show you how this data look like a bit. So if we go to our catalog, and I have here um, a schema that's about healthcare data. And in here, we have all different, imagine that these are like audio transcripts of discussions with a doctor. And these people, we have different people talking about different concerns and mainly we want to classify what kind of pain they had, like think of knee pain, back pain, and et cetera. So this is the output of this classification job. So if I go back here, I say classify the the input as knee pain and blah, blah, right? So this is what you have to do. Then in here, you need to choose what kind of data you have. So label data set means that you need to provide kind of the ground truth, right? So what is the label my agent will learn from and try to see if what it created matches the expected answer. We also have the way to do this in an unsupervised way. So we just throw the data to the model and the model will learn. And then we have, provide some, we have to provide some guidelines to guide the model what it has to learn. And the last one is few examples. Think of this as few short examples as we would do in a prompt. And then you just create an agent and you go about it. But I'm going to show you now and one that I have already built. So, so. If we go here to healthcare customized one. So after I configure, and as you see here, this is the configurations I have. I say classify the conversation as knee pain or headache or anything else. The build comes like this. So the first iteration you have to do is go through these recommendations. So these recommendations come out of the box. So it's part of the tool. And it just tells you some criteria that you need to add to tune your model so if you have worked on Databricks, it kind of matches to the MLflow evaluate judges or custom metrics we're building. And think of them as your evaluation suite. So we're going to evaluate the agent against this criteria. Here it says, okay, think about this. Determine if the conversation involves neither knee pain nor headache and classify it as other. You can add it as criteria. Identify key terms associated with specific joint, be a little bit more specific. And let's start with this for now. The other thing it can do is... is it Sorry, those were suggestions yes. to like refine the prompts that yes. you're going to follow to do the classification. Yes. But and so does it mean it looked at the data and then it thought about how to classify it and give some suggestions? Exactly. So when you do build from the configuration, there are a couple of minutes that the agent goes and learns as okay. the baseline iteration. We skip this now because it's going to take some minutes. Um, so we're now like after the first baseline agent was created, we have some suggestions on what things we should add and tune the agent on. But also these guideline suggestions, you'll see later on when we go to the review that are your evaluation judges. Oh, so this is going to be LLM as a judge yes. rather than uh, something that determines how to classify. Got it. Yeah. yeah. The how to classify usually is going to come on the described task. These are what are you going to evaluate your agent against? To, to allow your agent to take this into consideration, you need to do update your agent. So that is going to take the baseline agent we already had and just fine tune it now, taking into account that we are going to judge against this. So you will see how this looks like. So now this is the equivalent of you got the first agent and now you're running it against those evals, basically. Exactly. Okay, so you, if you see here, 
the answer changed completely, right? So here you say, okay, today I saw this guy it had some some pain. Here before the answer was all around very explicit around okay that was headache or other or it was more like classification tags but here now you have a bigger answer from the agent like the conversation does not involve knee pain or anything so it's more elaborate response depending what you need you can enforce the answer here for example now we can say answer in french okay let's see the idea is this right so you go you review some answers you come Make your task more specific and add any guidelines that you want to judge against. Okay. Is this correct? This means other. Other, other, douleur au zenu. In the <laughs> knee pain. Um, so this way that, right? So it takes into the task into account. Uh, for example, one thing we need to specify here, because as you saw, as we start iterating, the response completely changes. If we want to return only the classification tag as here, I think it would be better if we explicitly say just to return the, the pain. Whereas before it was being a little bit more elaborate on the response. Depending the task, we need to define how we want this to be returned to be more clear. But if I go to the review tab now, you see that they went and everything that we added in the guidelines, it came and judged this against as we do with the MLflow judges and the evaluation suite. So for all of the criteria we added, it says if that passed or failed the criteria. So for example, for this one, for this client, it says that the, determine if the conversation involves neither pain nor headache and classified it as other, right? So it says here that that was other and that was classified correctly because there was no such pain into the discussed content context. And so these are the judges. Yeah? Makes, Makes sense? sense? Any questions here? So you had an agent, you suggested like some judges which you accepted based on the judges, you then refine your agent and then you also transform your agent saying, yes. actually, I want the answer in French. Yes. And then you can again review it. Yes. Got it. What if we say from curiosity now, right? and, and Greek, I have never tried it before. <laughs> Let's see. It would be interesting to see if you do it in Greek. Ah. Amazing. Okay. Now, for example, the first thing I would do here, it's this, right? We have to enforce a little bit the schema. So. Let's just make sure we do that just for the sake of the argument here. So and you want... don't want the answer in French and Greek? I liked it. I want in French and Greek, but like enforce a schema, right? Because here one is coming like this, the other one is coming like this. So it's a little bit random. It doesn't know what exactly we are waiting. Yeah, but this one it was in English, not translating into French. Ah, uh, this one. Interesting. Okay, yes. So then the answer in general format as below, this has to be like auto or something like this, eh? So this is right in Greek, I guess. Douleur or genius would be correct. Yeah, it's knee pain. Is it the same in Greek? Yeah. Nice. It works. Amazing. And then it's going to, here it felt for some reason. Let's see what happened. So the term in, this is, uh, yes, okay. Identify key terms associated with specific knee pain. Okay, okay, okay. Joint swelling or mobility, therefore the guideline were not successful. Yeah, but okay, that was, um, we have to be a little bit more specific on this judge, right? Because that pain was, there was no pain found, right? So that is, that's why it's failing because it didn't find any pain and no specification of the pain. Uh, and yeah. we have to be a little bit more clever on the tags. Okay, but that is how you iterate. And as you iterate and you improve and improve and you improve, at some point you are ready and you want to either test this day, this agent on a data set or you want to put it in the pipeline. Or even you want to have like a very tuned in terms of course mod day out of this. So how do you do that? You go here, use your agent. The first thing you can do is try it in SQL and that will, it's going to spin up like a SQL interface. You go to the SQL editor and we are just hitting AI query with this endpoint that was created just by the agent bricks functionality. So if I go here. What model does it use under the hood? So you don't have specifications on that. Um, so this is the only place where we actually cannot deep dive into what happened behind this endpoint. So we don't have access to what model was used, what parameters were tuned, what prompt is being done. And this endpoint is created after the after the 
iteration is finished, you have this endpoint, you can find it on the endpoint, on the serving endpoints, where you just, just you can call as an API again, or you can call it through the AI query in this case. So we point to that tuned now agent that we have iterated, and we can run this in, in a SQL workload. So this now is going to go just points to the default table we used for the training of this agent, but you can point it to any other table. Like if you see, see here, this is the table we used when we fetched the first data for the agent to learn, uh, but that can be any other table. And so it's going to take this and apply the AA query on top. And is your agent registered somewhere? So here you can see the model. So here you can see the, the endpoint. Use this endpoint to perform it on the data, right? So you just apply this in all, in all the data set we had. And uh, these are the results that we get. We get the response we created or we tuned before. And that is it. The other thing you can do is if I go back to my LLM and I do use, I can also create a DLT pipeline through it. So by create, by hitting that, it's going to go and build a pipeline for me where I can find it in the job and pipelines. And, and here, and then you can start triggering this pipeline and hitting, like out of the box, you have a pipeline that automatically refresh, right? So when new data lands into a specific location, I can just apply this new trained model on this data and write out the table. Yeah. And the last one I want to show you is this. So after you, we are again in agent bricks, and after we have tuned and trained the model and we are ready, we have iterated, we have fixed all our evaluation criteria, we have this option to optimize this agent. And that, what happens behind the scenes is many things. One is swapping models and finding smaller models that can have similar quality but are less expensive to serve but also performing some small fine-tuning on the model itself. So while here we haven't, whatever we've done so far, it's not with touching the model artifact. It was more with techniques of prompt tuning, enforcing schemas, and etc. Here we're saying, okay, is there any better way to achieve same quality but a less cost by actually changing and updating a little bit the artifact, the model itself? And so... In order for you to run that, you have to have at least a hundred rows into your data set. And so you click optimize and it's going to spin up a job that takes uh, some time. Uh, but then as you run this, it just optimizes the agent you have. Now this is going to take some time. So I have one already done. And this one, I feel is this one. Yes. Okay. And then after the idea that you have already optimized your agent in your review tab now, you have two models that you can evaluate and see which one performs better. Your baseline model was the first iteration we created. The second model is now the optimized version of that. So after having tuned the model artifact itself. And the idea behind this is that you get an artifact that is smaller but similar quality to what you had before so that you are serving a smaller model at the end of the day. Again, the same things you see here, all the things are being traced um, and so that you can evaluate one versus the other. And that is it. So after you have this model, you either serve it through AI query or you use it as an endpoint as any other model or you put it as part of a pipeline in case you have like ongoing data set refreshes. Cool. Thank you. Thanks.